Well, it's been a beautiful almost spring day today. Spring is right around the corner, I think, uh, just uh, about two or three days away. And um, it's still a bit chilly. It's getting down to about eight degrees overnight, but not too bad. And uh, But last night was clear all night, which was fantastic. I was able to image till about five in the morning. And tonight, maybe till about midnight, maybe a bit longer, maybe a bit shorter. We'll see. I'm going to have all three rigs out again uh, imaging. So I've got the Esprit running here. The um, Mead is just going along for the ride. So the Esprit is doing all the work out at the, the observatory here and then I've got the other two rigs out on the uh, deck. So um, two of the scopes are imaging kind of the same area um, and that is the small Magellanic cloud. Now I am doing a two panel mosaic with the um, Asker and with the Esprit I'm actually imaging a small area of nebulosity sort of on the wing of the small Magellanic cloud and it was kind of quite interesting. Now the small and large Magellanic clouds are satellite galaxies of our Milky Way and uh, a lot of the attention gets put on the large Magellanic cloud because it's got the tarantula nebula in it etc but you know the small Magellanic cloud's got some quite interesting little areas of nebulosity and the area that I'm homing in on with the Esprit is um, I think it's called the, the sort of the main area that often is uh, imaged, particularly with longer focal length telescopes, is uh, a nebula called N90. And within that is a uh, cluster called NGC 602, which is basically, it's a star forming area, a lot of young stars there, and uh, the radiation sort of blowing the nebulosity out to the periphery, so we get this sort of nice O3 cavity surrounded by some HA. And it's not going to be um, so huge in this field of view because I am going to be collecting uh, some of the other nebulosity around it. But uh, parts of it are pretty faint, so I'm doing 20 minute exposures with this. And even though I've collected about 10 hours already, um, there are some areas that are only just showing up. So uh, I need to probably double that, I think, to um, get more detail. I've already imaged with the O3 uh, for about, I think about eight hours and that could do with a bit more as well, but of course we've got a almost full moon. So it's gonna be pretty bright. Some people may say, don't image on such a bright, bright moon, but uh, you know, you gotta make the most of these clear skies when they occur. So um, that's what I'm imaging here. And meanwhile, out on the deck, I have these two set up. So let's have a look at this over here. The Ascar 165PHQ um, quintuplet design and um, that has got the ASI 1600 on the back and the Obdelong 2 inch 7 nanometer filter wheels, filter filters sorry, and I've um, um, got the ASI Air Plus um, running it, the one with the good aerial that actually works and uh, meanwhile over here I have the Samyang 135mm lens um, that's got the ASI 533 mono on the back here and 1.25 um, inch 7 nanometer Obdelong uh, filters. So uh, this one is going to be imaging the large Magellanic cloud once it gets high enough and I can get most of it in the field of view whereas the Ascar is going to be doing a two panel mosaic of the small Magellanic cloud. And for the Samyang I'm also going to be running the ASI Air Pro. This is the version that's got the absolute crap Wi-Fi. Um, so I've got this attached on here to try and help boost the signal. It's, it's kind of marginally better. Um, it will it will get at least the signal into the house, whereas if I didn't have this on, I'd virtually have to be outside here on the deck picking up um, the ASI Air Pro. So it, it helps a bit. And so now it's just a matter of waiting for it to get dark. Okay, so before I get to my final image of the small area of the small Magellanic cloud, that was that uh, sort of area of NGC 602 surrounded by the nebulosity of N90 uh, that I imaged with a Skywatcher, I just thought I'd show you a bit of progress that I'm up to with the other two rigs. So first of all, this is the uh, Samyang 135mm on the large Magellanic cloud. 
And um, I actually quite like the square framing on this and how the, the cloud is pretty much filling the field of view. And, and I know there's a bits extra further out here, but um, I, I sort of quite like this. And you can see there are lots of interesting areas of nebulosity through here. There's a tarantula, which is obviously a favorite with everybody. Uh, but all of these little pockets of HA, these sort of swirls and, and, and whirls of it, I think uh, are worthy really of uh, their own images by themselves. And I may at some stage uh, sort of point the 10 inch mead at these individually to try and uh, have a look at these in more detail. Um, and these, all these areas of nebulosity do tend to be imaged just with the um, large or small Magellanic cloud as a whole. So, but I, I think they're worthy of their own their own images, to be honest. Um, this is the small Magellanic cloud um, panel so far. Obviously, the join's not very good here, but um, I think that's part and parcel. If we just zoom in here. You can see the noise level of, of this panel is much greater than this panel, and I, it's because there's a lot less um, images for this panel. So I do need to even things up a bit. Um, and as I said, I've really only done hydrogen alpha because we've had the moon about, and uh, I will um, try and get on to collecting some O3 and S2. Now, when it comes to the um, images that I've been doing with a sky watcher, so this is a 20 minute exposure, this is HA. And this area here is the most obvious. This is actually N90 here and um, NGC 602, which is a star cluster is within it. Uh, but I'm sort of imaging that with this area here, which is N89, uh, N89 um, and sort of a, a circular area of nebulosity in here, which you'll see in the final image. But you can see with the 20 minute exposure, it's very, very faint around here, so that's why it's required um, so many so many hours of imaging. You can see that area a little bit better showing out in the O3 here because this is there is more O3 around here. Um, but again, most of what's showing up is, is this area and this area. And the sulfur 2, um, even more disappointing. These areas are sort of still barely visible, and these are 20-minute exposures. So you can see why I did 20 minute exposures to try and pick up um, the, the nebulosity. Interestingly, even so in here, in the final image, you'll see this area most obviously in this area here, but there's actually some quite um, nice structure in here. This area kind of to me looks a little bit like a, a rose um, bud that's opening up. Um, pretty hard to see on a single exposure, but there is a lot more there once you stack it, which is why we actually do that. So um, anyway, I won't muck around any further and we'll uh, show you the final image uh, of the area of the small Magellanic cloud that I was doing with the Sky Watcher. And I wanted to quickly say thanks very much to everybody who's been uh, watching the videos uh, and those who have um, subscribed to the channel. That's uh, great. It really helps the channel grow. So I really appreciate that. And, uh, you know, if you've enjoyed this video, consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I've got lots more imaging um, planned in the future, and I'm, I'm hoping to get those final images done on the small and large Magellanic Cloud. So um, I'll leave you with my final image. And until next time. Uh